Hi, everybody. Raw images will often start off looking very flat, very dull, <laughs> very flat. And you need to make those adjustments to make it come to life. This is going to be my short tutorial and my example of how I do that with an image. Since you guys commented that you liked the goat picture that I took in my last video, then I thought I would work with that one. I have imported this image into Lightroom and you can see on the up, upper left of the screen here my settings that I use to capture this image. Now the foreground is uh, part of a wall, a wooden wall, and I don't even want that in the image so I'm going to crop that out. Then I'm also going to do some work uh, to get rid of the fire extinguisher in the back and I want it to be a black and white image. So the first thing that I do when I import into Lightroom is I go to the develop module. There's the library module, the develop module, maps, books, slideshow, print, and web. I want the develop module. So with this image, what I want to do is I want to make the face a little bit brighter and easier to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. Now I realize that by doing this I'm going to increase the exposure of the entire image and I'm going to have to make some adjustments for that. So I'm going to go all the way up to say about there and get up to 0.6. Now the whole image now looks a little bit washed out but I'm going to actually exacerbate this problem just for a second. I would like to bring up the shadows. The one area that I'm looking at right now is this area, the face. So that's what I'm working with first. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows as well. And that's too much. So let's say to about 25. Okay, now we have a very washed out photo, but the face area is a little bit better than it was to begin with. And you can see that if I reset the image. All right, but now I have to bring some of the contrast back in. Now, instead of using the contrast slider, which will also affect the whites, I'm just going to bring the blacks down. It just gets the darkest areas of the image. I don't want to go too crazy. I'll bring the blacks down to minus 19. And then I'm going to play with the dehaze as well, because the, the image looks a bit hazy and the dehaze is really good at just eliminating some of, some of that. So if I bring that up, keep going, keep going. Um, 36, yeah, that looks all right. So that looks a lot better already. So what I've done there is I've just adjusted the exposure, shadows, the blacks, and the dehaze. This is okay, but still I feel that the face on the goat is a little bit too much in shadow or just kind of not emphasized enough. In Lightroom, you have the option of doing selective edits. So I can just make some changes just to the face area using a brush. That would be right above where it says basic here. There are a bunch of tools that allow you to do selective edits and uh, some other things as well. And the one on the very right, I'm going to click on that. And that's gonna give me a brush. When you hover over the picture, you're going to see a brush size. I'm going to actually make it a little smaller like that. And then I'm going to brush over the face and the area where I want some changes to be applied. 
Now you're not seeing any changes applied here because I haven't changed any of the sliders on the right. On the right hand side in this box, see how it says effect? So we have a bunch of different options. I can change the same exposure contrast highlights, but I can do it just to this area. So for the face, I want it to be a brighter exposure. Right now it's in the shadows and I want to bring it up. So I'm going to bring it up. might add to the selection area a little bit on the neck there. So I've brought that up quite a bit and I might even just bring those blacks down in that area as well. Okay, so now I have done this. But what I want to do now is apply some other edits that might be easier in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is the custom cropping, which you can do in Lightroom, but I do, I like to do it in Photoshop. It's custom cropping and I'm going to get rid of that fire extinguisher and add to black and white. I'm going to right click on the image, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, there we have the goat in Photoshop. He has followed us there. What should we tackle first? The first thing that I do in Photoshop is I always duplicate the background. You can take, on the right hand side, you'll have a listing of your layers. And you can take that background and drag it down to this layer icon, which is like a little page with a corner turned up. You can do it that way to duplicate your background. That just makes sure that you have a copy of the original layer without any changes made to it that you can always go back to if you need to. So now I have my background copy. So I'm going to go to the crop tool on the left and I'm going to bring it in just far enough to eliminate that wall that is out of focus. And I'm going to bring the right side in to get rid of that window on the right because I feel like the white spot on the right will just be a distraction from my main subject. And I'm going to bring the top down a little bit, but I'm not going to... I, 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 for now, I'm not going to cut off the window because I kind of like that the whole window is there. And then I'm going to click the check mark and I have my image cropped. The next thing I'm going to deal with is this fire extinguisher. So there's different ways to apply, uh, to get rid of an unwanted object in an image. We're going to attempt to use the spot healing brush. We're going to make the brush itself big enough to just float right over that fire extinguisher and eliminate it. So it's eliminated the fire extinguisher, but I can tell you that when I zoom in, I don't like the way that it's done it because it looks very mottled and choppy here. So there's a few things I can do to fix that up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that area. I'm going to go to my selection and I'm going to feather it so that I don't have a very solid selected area, but a softly graduated selected area. So I will feather that say by 20 pixels and then I'm going to apply a blur. So I'm going to go to the Gaussian blur. And I'm going to pull the radius up until it's blurred just about to where I want it. All right, we're gonna try that. Now the only issue <laughs> that we're gonna have now is that that blurred area is very smooth and there is a grain around the rest 
of that area because I've used ISO 1250. It does have grain. So I'm gonna actually add that grain back in. So I'm gonna go to filter, noise, add noise, seven. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna click okay, and then I'm gonna deselect the area, and then I'm gonna zoom back out, and I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we have cropped the image, we've gotten rid of the fire extinguisher, and now I want to apply a black and white layer. On the right hand side, again where my layers are, there's a little circle, a half filled circle, and it says create new fill or adjustment layer. And I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on black and white. Now, you can make adjustments to the colors that actually exist underneath that black and white layer. Now, all of the areas in that were red in the image, I can adjust this slider to make them either darker or lighter. So I'm gonna start playing with these sliders. So if I move the reds down, the biggest differences I see are in the collar and the left background. So I'm actually going to leave that somewhere near the middle. Now the yellows. All right, so now we have our black and white applied. And I'm gonna go back to this half circle. And I can do a few different things here. What I would really like is to have the background a little bit darker to really pop that contrast, uh, to make that image pop. So I could go to a contrast layer and just bring up the contrast a lot. And you know, it's not bad. But I may not want that applied to the entire image. You see how there's this white box beside the contrast? Kind of like those selective edits in Lightroom. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm gonna choose the brush tool over on the left side. And I have the color set to black. And up at the top, the opacity is set to say 60% at first to start. So that means that anywhere that I brush over this image, as long as I have this white box, the mask selected on the right, I am going to be reducing that contrast by 60%. So I'm going to brush over the coat a little bit. Okay, so not bad. There's two final things that I'd like to do to this image. What I want to do is just apply a little bit of sharpness to make sure that the goat's eye is how I want it. So I'm going to click on the background copy that is the image itself, not the contrast layer, but the image. And then I am going to go back up to filter at the top, sharpen and unsharp mask. And click okay. So now I have this image. The last thing that I'd like to do is apply a bit of a vignette. I'm going to use Camera Raw, which is very similar to Adobe Lightroom. And I'm going to do that again with the filter. I have the background copy selected. This time I'm going to duplicate the background copy. Okay, so I can take that and go over that little page with the corner turned, or I could just hit Command J if you're on a Mac, or Control J if you're on a Windows. I'm gonna go up to Filter, and I'm going to click on Camera Raw Filter. Now this brings up a dialog box with the Camera Raw plugin for Photoshop. And you're gonna see on the right hand side all of those sliders that we had in Lightroom. But what I'm gonna do is there's a bunch of tabs right at the top here. I'm going to go over to where it says FX, Post Crop Vignetting, and I'm going to bring it down quite a bit. So down is a black vignette, up is a white vignette. The midpoint I'm even gonna bring in, and the highlights mean that the highlights are still gonna come through instead of just adding black around the whole thing. I'm gonna leave the highlights up a bit. Feathering means that it's gonna be even more gradual. 
Okay, so I've added my vignettes and I just click OK at the bottom right. So that's very, very dark. I don't mind applying a very dark vignette at first because I know that I can change the opacity of this layer. So this layer, the background copy two, this is part of the reason why I put it on a separate layer. I can change the opacity up in the top right by just dragging the slider up or down. So I'm gonna take it up to 68%, that looks great. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a mask. So I'm going to do that by clicking on this little, actually looks like a camera, the, the rectangle with the circle in the middle. And now I have a white square there. Anywhere that I paint black onto the picture will now remove the vignette that I've applied to this layer because that is what this layer is. So I'm gonna make my brush pretty big and it's still 60%. I'm gonna try that here on the goat's body. Good, see, so it's, it's lightening that back up a little bit. I wanna lighten back up those feet because those are so cool. And make sure I'm gonna put a little bit more light back in this wall around him. And that's it. There's the final image. I hope that you enjoyed this quick little edit of our friend, the goat here, and go out, have fun, enjoy whatever weather that you're having here. We have a very cold day again here today, but the sun is shining and it's absolutely gorgeous. So we'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye.